Prime Cabinet Secretary Madavati, Permanent Secretary Singoy, fellow dip diplomats, dignitaries, thank you. Thank you for the invitation to participate in this very significant day of, the, of Haiti and Kenya, and indeed Kenya in Haiti. Kusema komema ni baraka kutoka kwa mungu. And you have to give me an applause for that, I try. Today is even more poignant when we consider that yesterday, September the 7th, was the celebration of Africa CARICOM Day. Haiti is a member of Car CARICOM. And on that day, September the 7th, we so far ahead we thought that CARICOM, Africa, Kenya would at some point be together. A celebration of that day was driven and supported in its earliest formation by, among others, the government and people of Kenya. Dear friends, when on January the 1st, 1804, Haiti declared itself independent, declared itself free, it set off a chain of events that some 220 years, 252 days later, the Haitian people still have to come to terms with a global embargo, hostile invasions, a pariah status, and everlasting colonial animosity. For daring, for daring to be a black nation, and for daring to be free. In 2023, when Haiti again began to unravel, for the first time, an African nation stepped forward in a leadership role to say, we will help our brothers and sisters across the sea. Our global Africans need us. The shockwaves that that, that simple statement of caring that statement of humanity, we will help, has resonated deep in our Caribbean souls. Africa will help Africans. This action has strengthened us and even as Caribbean nations responded, as we always do, this time again, we did so in the hope that this time, maybe something new something different will emerge. After 220 years, 252 days, Haiti deserves a chance. To you, our Kenyan, our African brothers and sisters, we the people of the Caribbean thank you for joining the world and not just joining, but in leading, by looking over the waters and across the seas that connect us to each other, and by offering a hand that helps, a hand that helps to solve an African problem, a Caribbean problem, and a human problem. 220 years, 252 days old. These are the inflection points of history that the world will remember when prosperity and dignity are restored. The world will remember that Kenya helped. The Caribbean people will remember that you, our Kenyan brothers and sisters, helped. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for that. Uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Kenya, uh, Dr. Musalia Mudavadi, Excellencies, High Commissioners, Ambassadors, Chargé d'Affaires, 
and representatives of various missions uh, in Kenya. The Deputy National Security Advisor, the Inspector General of Police, who is here with us, representatives of various state departments, the Principal Secretary for Tourism, Nduguzangu wote hamjambo, hamjambo tena jamani, tusalimiane hewani kidogo, asanteni sana. Your Excellency Prime Cabinet Secretary, it gives me real pleasure to welcome you to this event, an event that has been put together with the intention of profiling our relationship with a beautiful nation of Haiti, an event that has been hoisted for the purposes of educating each other with regard to the importance of Kenya's deployment of our police under the aegis of the multinational security support mission in Haiti. And Excellency, an event that has been put together to establish a deeper sense of empathy and solidarity between Kenya and Haiti. Your Excellency, it is the charter of the United Nations Education, Science and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, that says that because wars begin in the minds of men, we must seek peace by engaging the very minds of men. And part of the reason for holding this conversation is essentially that we must begin to pull down the attitudes, the perceptions, and the, tra the traditions that hold back our ability as a country and as a people to show empathy and solidarity to others. And that is part of the reason we are here. Indeed, Your Excellency, it is said that darkness is not merely the absence of light, but in fact it is the belief that light will not come back. But you and I know that even when it's dark, the light will come through. That when it's darkest, light locks in the shadows of darkness. And therefore, Your Excellency, I want to submit that even when it's so dark and has been dark in Haiti, as, as has been said, Kenya believes that it can carry its little lights to Haiti. Its little lights of peacekeeping, of peace enforcement, has been carried to many countries. In fact, through our 60 years of independence, Your Excellency, Kenya's light of peacekeeping and peace enforcement and peace mediation and peace negotiation has been carried to over 40 geographies. Haiti is just the latest of them. From Timor-Leste to the Balkans in Kosovo, from Iraq, to Darfur, to DRC, to South Sudan, and to many other areas. We have carried our little light, and we have not been afraid that it will be put out. And so, today it is really my pleasure to ask Your Excellency to join me on stage so that you can deliver your official keynote address. Let's I am pleased to welcome you to this pioneering event aimed at fostering solidarity between Africa and Haiti through cultural celebration, economic support, 
and international advocacy. It is my hope that this event is one of many in the quest to garner support for development projects in Haiti, together with raising global awareness about Haiti's development challenges and opportunities. Kenya and Haiti enjoy cordial relations cemented by the signing of an agreement to establish diplomatic relations between Kenya and Haiti on 21st September 2023. Haiti has a long history of political instability since its independence on 1st January 1804. Currently, the Haiti situation is complex and the suffering of the Haitian people has attracted collective consciousness. The multinational security support mission in Haiti has garnered wildward, worldwide support, which is a testament of the continued shift towards the world as a global village and the importance given to world wide peace and security. Ladies and gentlemen, this event aims to strengthen bonds of solidarity between African and Haitian communities through the sharing of music and culture, which are powerful media for bridging gaps and building connections across diverse communities. I take this opportunity to welcome visiting artists from diverse backgrounds, including Haiti, Kenya, Romania, the United States, Zimbabwe, Liberia, Burundi, and Congo, among others. The Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs is pleased to co-host this event and wishes to provide a platform that addresses information and awareness gaps locally concerning the important role played by Haiti in Africa's history of liberation and culture. I also wish that this event creates local awareness and bridges gaps concerning the importance of the multinational security support mission in Haiti. Deployment of Kenyan police and Haiti's significant role in Africa's history of liberation and culture. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, it is my wish that this event succeeds in raising global awareness about Haiti's development challenges, opportunities, and resili resilience, together with promoting international cooperation, transcending race, religion, political affiliation, and global ranking. I welcome you all to participate in this event that celebrates the culture, cultural heritage of Africa and Haiti through music, art, and dance, fostering a sense of unity and solidarity. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just add a few remarks, maybe a minute or two. First, I think it is important that as we are at this event, we acknowledge the act of not just empathy, but courage from our president, William Samoy Ruto, when he stood out and said he is ready to lead the initiative of bringing harmony and peace to the people of Haiti. We will recall that this gesture of his did receive ridicule amongst some quarters. Basically, because people maybe did not understand the magnitude of the challenge ahead, 
People did not perhaps understand that it has taken a global dimension with the full backing of the United Nations. And of course, there are those who amongst every society will not bother about their neighbor or their sister. So these quarters did provide some measure of ridicule. But I want to say that as we speak, a few days ago, the Secretary of State of the United States, while visiting Haiti, did acknowledge the indispensable role that Kenya is playing in trying to restore stability and peace in Haiti. Ladies and gentlemen, anarchy breeds absolute anarchy. It leads to a situation of lack of law, lack of order, lack of peace, lack of sleep, lack of food, lack of medical care, lack of education. Basically, anarchy dehumanizes human beings. It is therefore important that when we talk about issues of security and peace, we must take it a notch higher. We must graduate from national security to regional security to international security and then ultimately to human security. Human security is the ultimate objective of this initiative. So it is important that we pull together, we work together, we support the efforts, and we appeal to the other nations within the continent who have been showing interest in now being part of the Kenyan-led multinational support that please put your best foot forward. We also want to appeal to other partners. If you cannot have boots on the ground, we would be very happy to see you giving logistical support, giving financial support to this effort so that the people of Haiti, the young children of Haiti, can stop living in dehumanizing conditions and live like other citizens globally. Finally, in Kenya, we have a song, Kenya Hakuna Matata. Let us all work so that later we can also have Hakuna Matata Haiti, ama Haiti Hakuna Matata. We can do this if we all work together so that we can save our brothers and sisters from the challenges that they are facing. So ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, let me fully associate the government of Kenya to this noble cause and once again give our appreciation to the young Kenyans through the Inspector General and the National Security Advisor, to the young Kenyans who have put their feet on the ground, the ones who have the boots on the ground, it's really courageous. We wish them well. We must support them. We must not ridicule them. This is a great moment for Kenya to prove that we, where lives are, Kenya is concerned. Thank you and God bless you all. Asante san. Eighty leaders in Kenya with over two million members countrywide. All are represented here today by different leaders from the region today to come and learn more about Haiti and go to the grassroots and share.
with our members because our voices come from the grassroots to the top. As a youth organization in Kenya, we support the mission of Haiti and we are determined on peace and justice. And just to remind you that the young people are the leaders of today, thus we raise our voice today and stand in solidarity with Haiti as African youths with future of better tomorrow. We thrive in collaborations because, as you know, youths are insufficient, balance and limits their potential, and remain vulnerable in most of African countries that we maximize on partnerships. We hope and part that partnership in countries we support and we shall stand still with Haiti because even the people who are right at Haiti are youthful. We hope to partner because the Kenya sayings go, umoja ni nguvu na utengano ni daifu. And even the Bible says that two are better than one, and so we shall unite. Today I stand here before you of the, as a vibrant and resilient youth of Africa with a deep sense of responsibility and solidarity for our brothers and sisters in Haiti. We are gathered here for a noble cause, to extend a helping hand across the ocean from the Kenyan coast, from Lamu, to the African and to the Haiti. This initiative is more than just an act of charity. It is a reaffirmation of the shared bonds between the two regions, which we have both experienced struggles and hardship yet continue to rise and courage and determination. Haiti, just like many other African nations, have endured profound challenges, natural disasters, political instability, and economic hardship. But what has always inspired us as Kenyan youth, as African youth, is Haiti's indominate Paul spirit. Despite all odds, Haiti continues to demonstrate resilience, creativity, and, re and re a relentless pursuit of better future. This is something we deeply relate to. We understand that the journey towards recovery and progress is never easy, but it is possible when we stand together. The African of today is more connected, more aware, and more driven than ever before. We are a global village, and so are the African youths. We recognize that the world is increasingly global, our problems and solutions are interconnected, and the plight of Haiti is just not just Haiti alone. It is a challenge for all of us. Kenya and Haiti share, share so much common culture and practices that today we are here as African country to celebrate it. I come from Lamu County, where we have the Lapset, well known as Lamu Port. We all know that Lamu Old Town is an oldest and best preserved Swahili settlement in East Africa, retaining its traditions, tradition functions. And that is where we relate so much with Haiti, given the port, or port, prince or port in Haiti. And like other Swahili settlements in Africa, we continue to thrive. Kenyan coast share so many things with Haiti, not only with the ports within the town, but also where the slave trade happened along the coastal region. We hope to have so many youth-led initiatives that will promote peace, harmony, and that can economically empower the young people in Africa. Already in November, we have one of the kind, Lamu Beach Rugby, that will draw rugby players countrywide. And we hope to have a rugby team from Haiti through the support of the PS, Koreal under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so that we can inspire the Africa at large. Through missions like Africa for Haiti, we are not offering aid only. We are building bridges. We are fostering a sense of global citizens and a unity that transcends borders. Our involvement as young people in this mission is a testament to the fact that African youths are not passive observers of global issues, but we are active participants in shaping a more just and compassionate world. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let us remember that our mission to support Haiti is not about providing immediate relief. 
It is about investing in the future of the young people in, in, in Africa. Just to invest in ours. It is about creating a lasting partnership that will uplift both Africa and Haiti. Together we can make a difference and together we can inspire hope, resilience and a brighter future for the young people in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jennifer. Thank you. A very warm welcome to online media. Of course, we are at the Uru Gardens to celebrate uh, Haiti, Africa for Haiti event. Now, we have the president of Kenya Youth Association. Organization. Organization. Yes. Now, it's going to happen. We are going to ask her, Mambo Mingi, about the event. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, thank yes. you for coming. Yes. You are Miss Wa. Ah, Jennifer Wairimo. Yeah. Uh, Waridi, mm. well known. I'm uh, Miss uh, President, Kenya Youth Organization. Mm. Right. Yes. What are we doing here today, Waridi? Today we've been here since uh, uh, the whole of the afternoon. Uh, we've been here to celebrate the culture that we share between um, Kenya and Haiti. And uh, specifically uh, bringing together the African countries, the African artists to come and uh, you know, speak through art and culture about our our ties between Haiti and, and Kenya. Yes. I think it was a success. Uh, congratulations, first of all. How uh, will it take Hazi, uh, the effort and everything uh, to make sure that this event has come to success? Uh, Africa for Haiti uh, concert. Uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here representing Kenya organization and how what and Viongozi Wenzangu, but we work together, and uh, we specifically a partner of Africa for Haiti. We were not organizer, but partner in the joint committee together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs that have given us a space. And Sahi, tunashukuru sana because kidogo kidogo we are getting to these tables and negotiating, negotiating, and also speaking on the behalf of the Kenyan Kenyan youth and even African youth. So, uh, Kenya organization is so much pleased to be part of this particular successful concert for the first time ever that we are starting, and we hope that um, we are going to form a coalition of youth organization where we are going to continue pushing this agenda forward and promoting harmony and peace for Haiti. Yeah. Now, talking about having a seat at the table, uh, I know when uh, when the people out there here, uh, Kenya youth leaders and all that, they associate you with the Gen Z's. Now, Gen Z's were well, leaderless. Now, Kenya Youth Association in a, in, a, in a Kenya Youth Organization in a Intel, which age group? Like the millennials, some are able to explain to Kidogo about it. Well, uh, Kenya Youth Organization, it is a youth-led organization. It is a non-governmental organization. And in Kenya Youth Organization, we, are, we have leader. We are not leaderless. Mm. We have leader. Myself, I'm the president. We have the CEO here, Jeremiah. And we have uh, the director, uh, Martins, mm. and we have Mr. Secretary, Ryan, and right here I have Mitieka, my communication director, mm. and right here we have an leader. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Now, oh, I sit at the table. Do you think tunaenda kuwekewa pesa ya youth hapo hivyo kwa yo kiti? Maybe to finalize on your question, yeah. Kenya Youth Organization, it consists of the Gen Z's and Millennial because Mwisho Wake ni 40 years. Yeah. So in Kenya Youth Organization, we are a youth-led organization and we articulate and push the youth, for, youth agenda forward. Mm. Yes, and we have leaders because there's no any movement in the world, even in the history of this world that's ever, ever succeeded without a leader. You cannot do it with being a leaderless. Yeah, you have to change the tactics. Yes. Oh, President Waridi, yes. me as a Gen Z, how can I uh, benefit from that organization? Yeah. Uh, so far, uh, Kenya the organization, we are uh, at the advocacy level right now, mm -hmm. but also we are partnering and collaborating with other organizations and even government institutions, requesting them to come on board and, uh, you know, help us to push the, to have those economic empowerment initiatives mm -hmm. so that we can be able to empower young people. Mm -hmm. So right now what we are pushing forward, it is the inclusion 
from the grassroots level because Kenya youth organization start from the village level to the sub county to the county level to the national mm -hmm. so sauti machinani no. yes sauti zetu machinani so sauti zetu wa zinatoka machinani zinapanda mpaka huku juu no. see vice versa okay. yeah we listen from the ground to the end of bottom up uh, okay. the major problem facing the youth need unemployment now most graduates are quite employed yes. now mkienda pale kwa table he mna is a uh, employment one of the agendas that you mna push for ama mna push for yes one of the main 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 thing that we're pushing for in Kenya organization it's youth empowerment and youth opportunity mm -hmm. that is what we are pushing for whenever we get a, a space to speak or a space at the table that is what we are pushing for and uh, we also advising our people at the grassroots level that they continue waanze kujipanga wasingoje serikali iwapange wajipange kufungua organizations na kampuni so that when we are asking for the for the 30 percent of the youth and uh, people living with disability uh, tenders even in the ministries to naitisha kitu yenye tuko ready nayo because young people we are failing we are failing whenever we want to work. We, we, sometimes we say tunataka ajira tunataka pesa but we are not ready you don't have even companies you don't have organization and the government can never support you when you are individual you have to be together united na mkue hapo na kwanza kitu moja ambao kwamba tunasema kama Kenya youth organization is that we need an increment of the 30% yes. youth in this country are the most they, ha they have the most population we cannot continue relying on the 30% of the tenders of the youth 50% that every all the tenders of the government all the tenders of the national government and the county government Zewe, 50% itaweza ku accommodate all the youth. Kwa sababu kila ministry itatolewa, ni kumaanisha ukipewa tender, mwingine apewa hii tender, mwingine apewa tuko sawa na wewe kama ukipewa tender na employ youth wengine. Government, I request the government to have an increase of the 50% from 30% to 50%. Lakini pia ile 30% bado hatujaiona. Oh. Yes. Right. So so you're putting short to uh uh, to the Kenyans and then also uh, to the people in Haiti? Uh, well, um, we are in solidarity mm -hmm. with Haiti, Kenyan youths, mm -hmm. and we stand with them. Mm -hmm. And we hope, as Kenya youth organization, we are going to have shots and coalition of all many organizations and have a voice that we are going to echo. That are going uh, to we are going to be ahead so that we can harmony between the two countries. Uh, initially, we are preaching peace because basically, Kenyan organization we are into peace and. Gorindi, let me take you back a little bit. Uh, umesema kunaanza mashinani tukienda uku juu. Uh, so, uh, me as a Gen Z who is out there, ama kwa po mashinani, how can I be part? Uh, how can you be part? In each and every county, we have a youth organization. We have Mombasa Youth Organization. We have Kisumu Youth Organization. So, we I plead with the fellow youth. Please, if you would want to join us, there is a leader. We have governor. I sit with 47 governors in the country. So we, we, I request the youth governors waweze kuwa reach out. We have our Facebook pages. Let them reach out them to them. They, let them invoke their names. And we are going to accommodate because this is an open organization and we are always ready to welcome and have people on board so that we can have one voice. And already right now we have almost 2 million members in the country. So we are able to push for the increment from 30% to 50% of tenders both in the national government and the county government. As we wind up, talk to you uh, vijana, kabla serikali tupange, wacha tujipange kwanza, tutafute ya makampuni, tujireste, na wale wako na kampuni, tuanze kuplai. Tusiseme hii jenda ni ya fulani na ya fulani. Let's try it before we give up, because the future of tomorrow depends on us young people. Let's also stop propagandas on social media about Haiti, sijui nini. You know, before you share. 
counter check the information you're sharing and fact check each and every uh, share you're making on socials and before you make sure you're typing the right thing let's be soldiers and security keepers to, to so that we can stop cyber 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 crimes and uh we we, we share and spread good uh, narrative about haiti because they are brothers sisters poorest country in the world but yo we can be able to stand with them and support them and uh, as citizen of this country as the youth of this country we can participate by sharing good vibes on the social media by also praying for them and also having initiative that they can bring together the haiti people here and us going there even to preach peace because already our people are already there and they're doing an amazing work right. yes yes thank you so much. thank you Asante, Asante. Uh, being our people who are in Haiti, we are here as Green Army to support them. Somebody will ask me why Green Army for Haiti. Green Army is a presidential flagship project that deals with tree growing, uh, greening the country, restoration of wetlands, and also ensuring that we address the issues of climate change and environmental conservation. You see, when you have green environment, when you have good climate, you have the tranquility and the peace that it deserves. So because of that peace aspect that comes with the environment, we are translating this peace aspect to support the people in Haiti that they get peace that we have as Green Army. So basically that is why we are part of this uh, caravan today and we are totally in full support of the people of Haiti as Green Army. Yes, thank you. Uh, just one question, uh, as the Green Army, yes. now uh, the budget that was set for uh, by the President, yes. uh, it's uh, around 15 billion, right? Now can you please enlighten us what that means to you as Green Army? Thank you very much. First of all, we want to appreciate the President for giving us, uh, for working tires, going outside the country to look for funds to support Green Army project. Now the president is working around the clock to launch a project that is going to involve all the youths countrywide in 10 regions to train them because you see you cannot do something when you don't have the background knowledge. So we are working on civic education, on tree growing, tree planting, environmental conservation for 10 regions. That is across the country from Nyanza to coast. So the youths of Kenya will be involved in the Green Army project they will tap into the resources that has been invested in that project. We are working with the uh, government agencies, the KFS and uh, the Nairobi River Commission and all those teams that are related to environmental cleaning. So what, this is what we are urging. In the coming days, we will be looking at, at the youths to bring on board organizations that are aligned with Green Army, organizations that are aligned with uh, uh, conservation. There are people who are doing tree planting, tree growing, seedlings, tree nurseries. These people will be brought on board so that that trees they are planting in the village, they can, they, the KFS can buy from them. Once they buy from them, they get that money directly to their pockets. Also, additionally on that, we are going to incorporate institutions. When we talk about institutions is um, universities, colleges, TVETs, and all those, those institutions. We are targeting uh, clubs that are dealing with the environment. We want to bring them on board because you see this knowledge that is in uh, campus or college they are being taught is what is needed outside here by Green Army so that we can use it to spearhead these 15 billion trees because the country forest cover should be more than 30% by 2027. So that is where we are heading as Green Army. So the money that you are asking, I know that is a very sensitive question, but the government is working on seeing this money is absorbed directly to the youths, to the people at Mashinani, and to the people at grassroots level. Uh, me as Gen Z, me as a young yes, person, yes. how can I join a Green Army and how can I benefit from being Green Army? Thank you. Uh, we are glad because we want to engage the youth across the country. It depends on which category have you been doing issues to deal with environmental change because you see you don't bring anybody to a project passion is the first thing what have you been doing at your own capacity i have an own organization that deals with uh, uh, greening the environment then we bring you on board as an organization you are in school and you are championing uh, 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 for climate change we bring you as an individual 
you are maybe at home or within your region, you have been advocating for climate change, we bring you as an individual. So that is what we are focusing, rather than just saying we are taking everybody to this project, but we want to take the right people who are champions of greening the environment, especially those who are in Mashinani than those who are in Nairobi. Yes. Yeah. You're parting short. Oh, yes. sorry. Okay, let me uh, just uh, to add on to that. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to working with around 5.6 million youths across the country. Uh, provide, uh, promote jobs. Uh, we have green green jobs that we are that are going to come up and also to anyone who might not have had the platform to start or might not know how to start then we're going to be launching the project very soon uh, in the meantime they can follow us on our social media accounts we post all our updates and we post how you can uh, use the environment to even earn an extra coin that is a uh, green army kenya across all our social media platforms and we as the youth we are also rallying uh, the youth of Haiti to uh, take up the same steps that we are taking you know work towards a greener more peaceful Haiti because that is our main message for today you know it is green army for a greener peaceful Haiti and that is why we are here and that is what we have been working tirelessly the past couple of weeks for just to see this a success secretary Musalia Mudavadi PS State Department for Foreign Affairs, Coril Singaway. All distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, youth and friends of Haiti, good evening. It is an honor to be here at the Harmony for Haiti Concert and Cultural Festival. We come here today together, not to just enjoy the music, but to celebrate the strength of the Haitian people and the deep ties between our nations, as has been mentioned here by the Barbados Ambassador. This event is part of a broader, broader Africa for Haiti initiative, which seeks to support Haitian rebuilding efforts through diplomacy, culture, and youth empowerment. It is in the continuation of our shared history of resilience and fight for freedom, as Kenya stands with Haiti. We extend our solidarity, not just through words, but through actions, as you can see. Earlier this year, during our Mother's Day vigil at the Freedom Corner on the 12th of May, we released 12 white doves as a symbol of peace and hope. That vigil reminded us of the need to constantly fight for justice and unity. Soon after, or there before, we also held a diplomatic community breakfast briefing back in February just to create the awareness to the diplomatic community. And I would really like to thank the diplomatic community for the support you've shown us to come for this event today. And we look forward to working, you, working with you very closely. And just recently, um, in, in, in February, we were privileged to host the Prime Minister of Haiti at the USIU, that is Prime Minister Ariel Henry, at the USIU in Nairobi. It was a monumental moment in the strengthening of bonds between our nations. And these are milestones that reflect our commitment to Haitians' future. Let us therefore this evening serve as a let this evening serve as a celebration of our cultures, but also a call of action, a call to action to everybody. That that country called Haiti is very dear to every one of us. When you look at the statistics that are out there today, we are talking about a population of about 11.6 million. And the WFP, that is a World Food Program, has said 5.3 million Haitians are on the brink of starvation. And this starvation has been man-made by the gangsters. Because Haiti has been through a myriad of challenges from the time of Katrina, uh, the Hurricane Katrina, then they had two, se two separate earthquakes, and the entire infrastructure and the systems collapsed. And that's how the gangsters and, and the people who have no good faith in, in the country's growth and development took advantage. Right now, we are hearing almost every day a hundred women are being raped. We are also being told that it has become a habit to kidnap women because women are the strength of our humanity. And thus, once they kidnap the a political solution, 
we do need a cultural and a more people-to-people -people solution. And that is the day Africa for Haiti was born. And this is just some of the things that we're going to be doing. So therefore, we are requesting the Prime Cabinet Secretary and the Principal Secretary and the entire national government to stand in the, in the diplomatic community and well wishes, to stand with us as Africa for Haiti, because we are going to make that hard journey and go to Haiti and help the young people rebuild their future. Because the statistics also show us that 70% of those gangs or gang members are actually children. That therefore shows us that if nothing is done faster for the people of Haiti, then we shall not have a nation called Haiti. And Amina rightly said, us as Africans, we love Haiti in our heart because indeed it was the first black independent nation in the world at a time when Africans were facing a very difficult time. So therefore, I'm appealing to all of you, as I conclude, please join us in Africa for Haiti. So when you see a letter or a request being written to you, please accept it and allow us to build this cooperation together. And may God bless Haiti and protect our policemen and we, uh, policemen in Haiti, and may long live Haiti. Thank you and God bless you. Everything you put your